beautiful soul family thank you for being part of this channel if you would like deeper support for your spiritual journey i invite you to check out our retreats and the creation temple you can join as a master creator royal creator divine creator or a free member we would also appreciate your sponsorships and any donations you would like to send our way to keep these videos coming to you much love welcome to episode 68 uh, oh, this is about the solstice, and when I, I don't, I can't remember. It was the the morning. I think it was the morning of the solstice day when I woke up. I felt and and saw with my mind's eye like a veil being torn in two, and the light was pouring through the veil. So the first question we're going to start out with is about that visual kind of experience also that I had and to see if Prime Creator can share any insight about that. Dear ones, in many conversations we have spoken about the light pouring through more and more light coming to your planet. This vision, if you will, is simply a representation that there is now even more light coming to you, coming to your planet. It is an invitation to open your hearts, open your minds, open your energy fields to receive this light. Even with a small opening, the intensity of the light is of great service. For there is muted light that shines upon the shadow, and only certain layers or levels of shadow can be revealed with a muted light as compared to the intensity of light now coming to your planet. This light is able to penetrate many layers, many levels, to more depth of shadow than previously before. What this means for your external reality is that you will continue to see more of what has been hidden in the shadow. Do not be surprised if what you thought was truth turns out to be false, if what you thought was false turns out to be truth. For as the light penetrates the depth of shadow, all is being revealed to you now. This process is not complete at this time. This process will continue in your months and years to come. You will continue to see more and more layers of shadow. And so while I, while I am not encouraging a fluidity of truth, so to speak, I am saying to not become attached to your ideas of what you think is truth. For some things that you think are not fully representing the whole. You will be able to access more truth through the heart, through the intuition. than through the mind in most cases. For those of you who have super discernment, the mind can be, can be a great tool for discerning truth. But for many of you, there is still much programming that influences what you see as truth or what you might think as truth. And so it is better in this case to cultivate your intuition, to cultivate your heart's knowing, 
for a deeper, more complete discernment. A client asks, We recently had a small amount of UFO disclosure on the mainstream news. With the shadow being revealed and the veil being lifted, are we going to experience more disclosure in 2018? I will do my best to explain through this channel. You can anticipate more disclosure. However, this comes with an alert or a warning that again, not everything you see or not everything you are told is going to be truth or true disclosure. This is a process that is set up with many smoke and mirrors, you might say, for there are still strong agendas running to influence you to think a certain way about your star brothers and sisters. And so on one hand, Yes, this disclosure will bring more awareness of your star brothers and sisters. And on another hand, this awareness will not always be completely pure or truthful. Pay attention to whom is delivering the source of information Pay attention to your own heart and experience and how you react from your heart space to this information. For example, recently there were lights appearing in the sky that some say are SpaceX rocket tests and some feel quite a different energy from these lights. And so it will be a practice in discernment of what you feel from directly witnessing or watching a video of this experience or similar experience. Because how these things will be portrayed by your media is not always truly accurate of what the event really is. This is a time that it calls for great discernment and to allow the experiences and opinions of others. For you may stand side by side with someone and witness something in the sky and each of you will feel something completely different. You may even see something quite different. And to allow the experience and feeling of the other. And to know your own personal experience and what it means to you. A client asks, the Vatican has a telescope or series of telescopes. One of them has been called Lucifer. What is the Vatican using these telescopes to look for? Again, I will do my best to explain through this channel. They are looking for a light source, a certain kind of light that they can manipulate, that they can take and use for their purposes. This light will make it appear as if they are of the light, but they are not using this light for purposes of the light for the highest purposes, you might say. It is a deception of sorts. They are attempting a harvesting of this light, similar to what you know as malevolent ETs who want to harvest gold or other precious substances from other planets for their purposes of furthering their own race that is not in benefit for all. This is a similar situation 
of wanting to harvest this resource. A client asks, so is this a project or program that the Vatican has in collusion with other ETs? In a manner of speaking, dear one, those ETs that are of the same lineage that are not currently in human form and can assist from where they are. It is less about human versus ET and more about the lineage of these beings. The client asks, are members of the Vatican that are working on this project members of this lineage? Yes, dear one. The client asks, you said that chaos is to come in 2018. How can we be more in flow with that? And how can we recover better from the waves of energy that might cause us to be in exhaustion? Yes, dear one, allow me to clarify. More chaos will seemingly appear, will seemingly unfold and be revealed. It is not that there is more coming, it is more is showing up that has always been hidden in the shadow. You are simply seeing more of it now, and so it appears to your perception than it is more chaotic before, but in truth the chaos has always been there. And so to deal with what you are now seeing, with what is now being revealed, I invite you to take exceptional care of your nervous system. to especially focus on the breath. Physiologically speaking, there is a transformation that takes, that takes place within the human body when breathing through the belly. And so to continually bring, bring your focus to your breath and how you are breathing so that you can train your body and your nervous system wiring to calmness, to peace. You can train your body. You can train your nervous system through the breath. Of course, as we have discussed before, eating pure foods, hydration, being grounded with nature. All of these things are helpful for the nervous system as well. And one of the most effective ways to train your nervous system is with your breath. And it works both ways, dear ones. For if you practice shallow breathing through your chest, you are training your nervous system to be on high alert. You are training your nervous system to fight or be in fear or to run away. And so when you activate your physiology through the belly breath, you can influence and train your nervous system to be in a more relaxed state. It is also helpful for some to place yourself in muted light, to create a retreat or womb-like environment from time to time. As I mentioned earlier, the intensity of the light coming now is much greater and there may be times where you wish to restore yourself to take a few minutes away from bright light and to put yourself in a soft, muted environment such as a room with the light from a salt lamp, for example. This will also encourage the nervous system to not be on high alert. There are many tools at your disposal, dear ones. I would invite you to carefully consider which tools 
you use. For some tools will give you temporary relief, but then bring side effects later, and some tools will bring you sustainable assistance. And so it is helpful to know your body and how you respond to different tools so that you can choose what is most highly aligned for you. Beware of the tools that give you the temporary relief, for in the end, these types of tools can do more harm than good to your nervous system, to your auric field, to your energy body. A client asks, regarding the waves of light coming, are they an actual conscious thing or is it just a product of two stars crashing? Yes, dear one. There are many sources of this light coming to your planet. As we have discussed before, this light is coming from many different places and many alignments. And so some of this light is a product of moving through light within your galaxy. And some of this light is more of a conscious effort, you could say, where light beings such as planets, galaxies, other universes are aligning in such a way as to strengthen the light coming to your planet. And this has much more consciousness or deliberate organization. A client asks, how do I feel that bliss and connection to source that made me so happy? Right now, I don't really feel that anymore, even though I do so much meditation. You must set a healthy boundary, dear one, for you are doing much work for the collective. Some of what you are feeling is the collective energy, mostly not yours, some of it yours. So if you want to feel this bliss again, you must set your intentions to do the meditation for you. Now to understand, dear one, what you are doing for the collective is of great service. And so you can use this information how you wish and also to understand that the goal of being human is not to enter a state of bliss. It is to experience being human, to develop your mastery of lower vibrations, of lower density living. So if you are wanting to experience bliss as a type of escape from feeling something you must work through. This does not further your mastery. If you are taking moments to experience bliss, to provide balance to the human experience, this is a different intention. A client asks, as everybody is talking about awakening, I don't feel too much. Am I awakened? Or is there a certain percentage you can give me? Please understand, dear one, that everyone is wired differently. Everyone processes, senses, feels, knows things through different channels, through different ways of perception. Just because you do not feel does not mean you are not awake. As a percentage does not serve, I will not speak numbers with you, dear one. However, please understand that this concept that humans call awakening is quite fluid. For there is 
the understanding that you can have from your human perspective. And as you move out of human body into etheric form, into light body, there is completely different perspective that you would have. In some ways, this concept and asking if one is awake is a setup for judgment, for comparison. What I am trying to say is to know within your own being who you are. It does not matter if you are awake or asleep. What matters is that you are in human form. What matters is that in this here and now you are on this planet. What matters is that you have life and breath as a human being. And in some ways, this is the greatest awakening there is. To have life and breath through a human form. And you are beautiful, dear one. Is there anything else Prime Creator would like to share with those watching this video at this time? I would invite you, dear ones, to respect where others are on the journey. For you may be in a place of celebration, or you may be in a place of suffering, or somewhere in between. And when I, res when I say respect, I mean to not compare yourself to another. As you observe fellow lightworkers, and you see what they have accomplished, or you see them in suffering, and still very much in the trenches doing their inner work, to offer celebration to those who are celebrating, to offer compassion and assistance to those who are in the trenches, so to speak, and to not compare. For many of you will begin to see more clearly the experience of others, why they are experiencing what they are, why they are having difficulties, or why they appear to be smooth sailing, so to speak. And so it is important to not offer judgment or comparison, but to celebrate and have compassion for each where they are on their journey. For this is part of creating the harmonized matrix, dear ones. For example, if you are in suffering and you observe another having a beautiful experience, to be happy for them, to celebrate with them. And if you are one who is noticing another that is in suffering, to lend a hand as you feel guided, or to simply withhold judgment and allow them on their journey, allow them on their path, allow them to go through what they are going through without trying to interrupt their process. With this allowing, with the celebration of another, you strengthen your harmonized matrix to allow all experience within the whole, to transcend polarity, to develop a neutrality about what you observe, not dissociating from parts of yourself so that you do not feel, but to allow the experience to unfold. I thank you, dear ones, for your continued commitments to your growth, to your awareness and development. I have said it before and I will say it again, you are making a difference as you do your inner work, 
as you free yourself from patterns and programs that have been placed upon you or that you have been born into. There is a ripple effect that emanates from your being as you release what no longer serves, as you allow more of the true you to emerge. I thank you, dear ones, for your commitment to your growth, for wanting to become better versions of yourself. I love and appreciate each of you, dear ones, and I thank you.